gambling led me to being homeless, helpless and hopeless. Because after a while you start to think, look, even if I win the biggest jackpot in the house, I'm still going to be behind. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to catch up, you know. And it's... Um, so you, uh, uh, you're just in a hypnotic state. I'd be at a party um, surrounded by people um, that I was friends with and I'd, I'd feel so alone in that space, you know, and I'd, I'd, I'd resort to going to the bathroom to watch races on my phone at parties, you know, and putting bets on in that space. So it's, it's, quite, it's quite a weird feeling to be surrounded by 40, 50, 60 people um, and feel yeah, disconnected. It really got ugly. Uh, I was uh, living with my two sisters, and uh, you know they they knew the extent of my problems, and they were trying to help me. And uh, you know, and I abused that. And so one day, my my youngest of my, of my two sisters came home and said, "You know what? I've talked to our parents, I've talked to our sister, and we've come to this decision. We love you enough to no longer have you in our in our lives." I won't kick you out of this house today, but you must find alternative accommodation. It was kind of like an infidelity, but there was also, and there was anger and frustration, and it was really difficult because all I could think was, I'm going to lose everything that I worked for for my little boy. And look, I was just about on the verge of my 31st birthday. And I was exhausted from my gambling uh, because there was so much lies, there was so much manipulation. Uh, I was in a constant state of terror of who was going to ring on the phone next, who was going to knock at the door if I walked down the street, who might see me, who might I owe money to, you know, that had lent me some money to help me out. Um, I was exhausted and, and I wasn't even, I, I, I virtually got to a midlife crisis by the age of 31. By them saying that to me, I was faced with a decision. And you know what? I, I just was desperate for a change. I really was, because it takes a whole lot of energy to be a problem gambler. The program was to stop gambling altogether and one day at a time. Basically the same rules as Alcoholics Anonymous, which most of us know about from movies and stuff. And you, you were allowed to chair a meeting if you were if you were gambling free for three months um, and you know just the week before my three months was up I had a bust as they call it I just uh, I, I, I went and get I, I went to town to buy some uh, takeaway Indian food or something like that Thai food and I thought oh, I'll just go and get a bottle of wine to go with it down at the the pub down the road, walked in to get the bottle of wine and there were the poker machines over there and I thought, oh, I, you know, I reckon, I reckon I could just put 10 bucks in there and, and then walk out. And of course I, I didn't. Well, it's, um, I guess you don't understand it until you are really in it. Um, as I said, I didn't know that I had an addiction. I didn't think like that. And once you're in that realm and the addict is in control, you don't think about the important things in life, like your family, like your bills, like savings. Um, those three things, you know, are important to building a happy life. And um, yeah, I did not pay attention to those things. I pushed those things aside when the addict took control. Probably one of the worst nights of my life was where I had friends who were coming to stay with me from overseas. And I was very excited and uh, I, I was going to entertain them uh, as you do with, with guests, etc. And, and that incident I just referred to happened the night before they arrived. So I actually had to, and for the first time ever, I hadn't left myself enough money to pay my rent. So I had to actually say to my friends, I, can you lend me the money to pay my rent? And, and my mate, uh, he rescued me. He, 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 he and his wife said, come on, we're gonna look after you. And they, they rescued me financially, you know, from immediate ruin. And uh, 
Frank um, booked um, a psychologist, booked appointments for me with a psychologist and found out where Gamblers Anonymous was. And so I, I went to my first night at Gambling Anonymous. You're doing so much damage to the people around you. You're limiting your future. Like, you, you, your life could be so different. And, you know, because I grew up and we, we had to have second best. We got clothes from the Smith family. Bills had to be paid by charities. And that's just when you know that there's an issue and it needs to stop. Like you need to um, look at getting help and, and, and the best way to do, do that is to talk to somebody and not keep quiet about it, not just um, going in a downward spiral. Ask for help.